Let's continue showing a few of the assembly steps here of our super small bore. This is the small, um, well, it's a small valve 1275 head. This is one of the 12G1316 castings common to the U.S. models of sprites. People call it the smog head. I've said before they're a very nice casting. This one lightly ported, but let's stick to what we want to show here. Um, installing the valves on a simple drill press. You know, people think these are complicated things. There's nothing to these. Uh, you know, a few basic tools. I like to show some of my uh, simple setups that anybody can duplicate. Um, I use a little assembly lube on the stem of the valve. The same lightweight red stuff that I put on the bearings. I don't like to leave a puddle there because we'll start with a big cloud of smoke. So we'll get rid of the extra ring. And then we've got another one of our high-tech tools, a little piece of wood. It's one of those little construction wedges trimmed down. Fits in the combustion chamber nicely. Um, I'm going to lay the head over with that piece under it. And uh, then I'll show some of the uh, trickery of using a drill press to install valves. Simple stuff. All right. I laid it over with that spacer underneath, and that keeps the valves closed. The head's a little bit resting on it. But that way, when I put pressure on the valve springs, the valve stem stays there, so I can put the little keepers on. And I am using, you can you might guess here from a look at my parts cleaning uh, sink area, that uh, there's a number of uh, race heads and a big pile of parts to pick from here. So I happen to have these Subaru seals that I've used before for extra clearance when using the 103 cam uh, with one and a half ratio rockers. Now, in this case, this is going to be on a small bore, even though it's 1275 head. We won't use the 1.5s, but I have them uh, lightly used here off one of the race engines. They're fantastic quality, so I'm putting them on. Uh, these are a color. Let's take a quick look here. Yep, those are the intakes. Slip that down onto the guide. The exhaust, slightly different color. These are the ones that don't use those retaining O-rings that fit into these grooves at the, at the bottom of the guide down there. And uh, when you've machined the guide down, we have not in this case, uh, these sit a bit lower to give extra clearance for the valve springs. Um, speaking of which, I've got these color-coded again to keep the big pile separated. You can see the small little step under there for the inner spring. And then over here, what's this thing? That is actually a Chevrolet distributor clamp, if I'm not mistaken. Put a bolt through it, a couple of stiff washers, and it makes a great, let's see if I can do this here with the camera still going. I've got the, uh, let's see, what did I put the, uh, I'm going to go over here to the dark area because I had to move the light. I've got this set of lightweight retainers. Let's take a look and see if I can... I can't do the actual installation of the uh, keeper. But I can show you the trick here just with a drill press. These are performance springs. Oh, I've got a slight clearance issue with the rotation of the drill. Here. There we go. And you can see that with relative ease, you can compress that spring as much as needed. You know, the race setup goes down a half inch. And you can see here that you can overcome any valve spring pressure. Simple old Harbor Freight drill press. So I push that down, and I might use this little magnet over here, or just drop the little guys in, center them, and gently let it up, up into place. I need two hands now. <laughs> 